Hi, this is Shane with Relative Time, and this video is going to be a little different. It's not a review, more of a quick story about a watch that's special to me, and a very brief preview of my next review as it's related. While this watch has more than a few scratches and dings, it is very special to me. It's the first watch that I ever bought myself. It's a Pulsar Solar. I don't even know what the model number is anymore, but as of next month, it'll be 20 years old. I grew up wearing Casio calculator watches, but when I got to college, I had a little bit of a revelation. I realized that sooner or later, I was going to have to have an interview, first for an internship and then later for a real job. And I thought that a digital watch wasn't exactly professional looking. Worse yet, having grown up reading digital watches, I had a hard time reading an analog clock. So I decided it was time for a real watch. Now as a gadget guy, I of course wanted whatever was the latest, greatest technology, which at the time was Seiko Kinetic or Citizen EcoDrive. But as a college student, I needed to be a little thrifty. Luckily, I found out about Pulsar watches. Now, originally Pulsar was a Hamilton subsidiary. They were the ones that came up with the first digital watch. But later on, they were sold to Seiko, and Seiko used them as a more affordable brand. At that time, Seiko was pushing a lot of solar technology towards Pulsar in an effort to compete with Citizen. And as a science geek, a solar-powered watch named Pulsar sounded good to me. eBay was younger back then, but looking through it, I was able to find this guy for about 60 bucks. I didn't know anything about watches at the time, but I liked the look of it. Kind of a cross between a field and a dive watch. It has a faint dark blue dial, mostly due to the solar cells underneath. But I like the dive-like loom markers, as well as the fixed bezel and turtle-shaped case. Although, to be completely honest, I got it mostly due to the minute markers on the fixed bezel. I thought of them as training wheels to help me relearn to read an analog clock. Once I got it, I wore it every day until I graduated, at which point I got myself a little more dressy kinetic as a graduation present. Since then, it's been my beater watch and what I use as a travel watch for my more adventurous vacations. It's on its third set of straps, with its original silicon straps having disintegrated on me. It's been on my wrist through countless home improvement projects. It's also been to about 30 of the 50 states and probably seven foreign countries. I've worn it at five-star hotels and no-star shacks in Latin America. I've even taken it diving more often than I should have. In fact, it's even been in a shipwreck 65 feet below. Now, usually a watch becomes your beater when it's the least valuable in your collection. But the problem from having a beater for so long is you start to get really sentimental about it. For a watch that cost me $60, I've gotten 20 years of service out of it and not a single problem. I can't ask for more than that. So I've been thinking about retiring it. But to me, a watch really belongs on your wrist and having it sit away in a box never to be worn until it breaks on its own is almost as bad as having something happen to it while you wear it. Which brings me to the three reasons that I made this video. The first is just to document this watch. If mine's still working, it's probably not the only one. So if anyone runs across one in a thrift store, eBay, or a garage sale, this video is here for them to find. Secondly, while I'm not retiring it from beater duty, I am retiring it from vacation duty. It's taken a few months, but I finally got a watch a little more rugged to replace it. Or more rugged as water is concerned. So I'm going to be giving a Vostok Amphibia a try for a while. So this is also a brief preview of my next review of the Vostok Amphibia. And lastly, a reminder. With YouTube, it's very easy to pull up videos on rare and high-end luxury timepieces that I think sometimes we forget. The most important thing about a watch isn't how much it cost or who made it. The most important thing is its history. The history that you make while wearing it, which is far greater. Thanks for watching and until next time.